Half Moon Reef Project is an amazing opportunity. It's one of the largest oyster reef restoration projects ever to be built in the United States. Through this project, we're going to be able to measure and document a lot of the different services that this reef is going to provide, including water filtration and the production of fish. It's one of the great opportunities that we have with oyster restoration. Here's why the Nature Conservancy is interested in restoring oyster reefs in the Gulf of Mexico. First of all, oyster reefs are tremendous at filtering water. In fact, they are the ocean's filtration system, in particular in the Gulf of Mexico and Matagorda Bay. But the other thing is they're an important component to making sure that habitat is healthy. The other thing that we're learning is oyster reefs might be an important piece of the puzzle as we face increasing intensity of drought. And the in-stream flows that are necessary to help produce oyster reefs are part of what we're testing here with our science. Here's how incredibly productive oysters are. Each oyster filters between 40 and 60 gallons of water a day. When we build an oyster reef that's just 15 acres, that reef is filtering as much water as the entire Houston Metroplex uses in a day. Oyster reefs are incredibly effective water filters and they keep the habitat clean so that oysters and fish and other marine life can thrive. Oyster reefs can really contribute to try to protect coastal habitats as the world is changing. So as temperatures are warming, sea levels are rising, coastlines are really changing their shape. And because oyster reefs create these nice three-dimensional structures, they, can, they serve almost as biological breakwaters that can protect those shorelines from erosion due to these changes. When the reef is restored, some of the species that we'll be looking for that are representative of natural reef systems, which is what we hope to see, are things like toadfish, mud crabs, um, blennies and gobies, and different types of shrimp will be really integrated within the reef matrix, and that will bring in all these larger fish like the, um, the sheep's head and the black drum that people are interested in coming in um, and fishing as a sport fishery. sort of first phase of the project. We've designed and engineered 26 rows that they're going to construct for us. Now this over here is where they take uh, the barges off the intercoastal waterway. They bring them here and then they transfer the material onto a barge that doesn't draft nearly as deep. Because as we get towards the project site, what happens is we get into much shallower water. The reef row should be 18 feet wide, three feet high on the center line, and sloping down to the bottom at these outer cane poles. So he's putting the rock on the center line, and that periodically he'll take his excavator bucket and he'll spread that rock out over the 18 feet width of the reef row. We hope that it looks a lot like the old reef. Uh, we want to see it doing what it was doing 100 years ago. When we restore the healthy ecosystems and habitats in the Gulf of Mexico, it protects these beautiful places that people take their families all summer long to swim in the ocean, to fish. It protects an incredibly important source of seafood for this country. The Gulf of Mexico is part of our country's energy independence. This ninth largest body of water in the entire world is probably one of the hardest working bodies of water we know. And protecting its health is protecting our own self-interest. We like to take a step back at the Nature Conservancy and say, how would we declare victory? First of all, is that we see a reconstruction of an oyster reef that's productive, that we see all sorts of oysters and that they survive during drought conditions. The second thing that we're looking for is additional biodiversity. These are terrific filtering systems, so we'll be looking for all kinds of fish and other marine life aggregating around these oyster reefs. And the third thing we're looking for is establishing a best practice. Is this the best way to construct these oyster reefs? Once we crack that code, we ship it all over the world at the Nature Conservancy.